Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's HBO's original series, Watchmen, starring Regina King. Season one, episode eight, entitled, A God Walks Into a Bar. Absolutely phenomenal episode. Were you absolutely excited when the credits started to roll and then there was more to it? Oh my goodness, we'll get into all of that. For those of you who are new to the channel, I do a recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side to give you a visual interpretation and then we do the review at the end. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. Like all of the other episodes for this series, the word Watchmen always has some type of transition to let us know the emotion of what we're about to see. For this episode, we see in fluorescent lights, Watchmen go from a bright yellow and snapping into the color blue. We finally see the likeness of Dr. Manhattan. Manhattan himself walking along in the streets and we see that there are increments of celebration, confetti, there's a mask, there's plenty of evidence that people have been ex ex celebrating VVA Day, which is the celebration of when Dr. Manhattan helped out President Nixon in order to overtake Vietnam. He grabs the mask, only to let people think that he's someone that's painted in all blue, that's putting on a mask just to celebrate this day, kind of not letting him stick out like a sore thumb. When in actuality with that day and those events, it makes him look like he's just somebody celebrating that day. We see the back of Angela. She's in a chair with her Saigon police officer uniform on. Dr. Manhattan presents himself with a question and asking, can he sit there? Is there a way that she can join him for a beer? And she tells him no, and he says, okay, well, if, if I get this question right, then you will allow me to sit down. And she says, well, go for it. And he asks the question of, You're at, are you here um, celebrating or are you remembering the day that your parents died and angela seems like she's insulted but intrigued at the same time and she says okay you know you can sit down but who at the precinct put you up to this who told you that information about my parents and he says well you did 20 minutes from now She's like, okay, well, that doesn't make any sense. What are you doing here? What do you want? He then proceeds to get to know her. He's still talking to her with the mask on as she, as he hands her a glass of beer and they're sitting there starting to spark conversation. And she says, well, what's your name and who are you? And he proceeds to tell her that I'm Dr. Manhattan. And she's just, she's thinking he's full of it. What this guy that's coming to a bar talking to me, telling me he's Dr. Manhattan and he's dressed as Dr. Manhattan. And he says, well, you know, everything that they're saying, you know, it isn't true. They're saying that I'm on Mars. And she says, so aren't you, aren't you on Mars since you're Dr. Manhattan? And he says, well, no, what's on Mars is actually a decoy. I'm actually on Europa, Europa which is the moon for Mars. So I'm actually not there. And she says, oh, okay, so, so you're there. What are you doing there? And where are you now since you claim to be uh, at this place that you're in? You're there, but you're here talking to me at the same time. And he tells her, well, I don't go along with the same time frame that you do, but I'm actually in several different places at once. I'm on Europa. Um, I'm in a point where I am, um, what did he say? I'm actually in 1937. And he just goes on and on. I can create life with the wave of my hand. And he's explaining how he waved his hand and made this euphoria of a world that he was able to, to create life. And he's just going on and on and on with her. 
Angela is still in disbelief of what this gentleman is telling her. And she says, well, if you can create life, what about Adam and Eve? What about that story? And he tells her, well, that is a fictitious story. That's actually not true. What is true is at the same time that I was on Europa and I was I was actually in 1937. My father and I, we were transitioning to get ready to go to America. And on that trip, I learned about creation and what's real and what's not. It looked as if they were in a home or what is considered to be a hotel now. Maybe people that were on the way, there were several beds there, um, but it looked really sophisticated. There were several people there that looked like they were uh, taking trips or they were on on to another country etc and as he's sitting there with his father and they're both on the beds the father instructs for him to get bread and he gives a little narrative of how his father loved to make watches and that he was a watchmaker and that was his creation and as a kid, instead of directly going to get the bread for his father, he's wandering around in this place and he sneaks into this room where he sees two people about to have sex and they're on the bed. But when he rushes away to get in the closet, so he's not seen. And as he's watching this, he drops an apple and the people hear him in the closet. They take him back to where his father is, where everyone is eating dinner. And they ask the father, what's your name and what's your son's name? And he tells his son firmly to stand up, hold his chin high, and to make sure to say his name is John Osterman. To say that and to have pride in his name, he says his name. And the two people say, well, can we speak to your son in private? And the father gives permission for them to speak to him. And the couple says, you know, what you saw earlier, it's not a bad thing. It's, it was actually us as husband and wife. We were in the process of creating life. We used to have a child and he died at a young age. So we're in the process of creating, doing something new. In exchange for what you saw, we would like to give you something special. And they hand him a Bible. And John expresses that that's not what my father wants me to read. You know, that's really not what we do. And they said, well, it's okay. It's something that you can have and just something that you can read. And they go on to discuss Adam and Eve and how they were the first of creation. And they tell him, make a promise to us that you'll read this book. And when you grow into adulthood, that you will create something beautiful. Promise us that you'll create something beautiful. And he looks them in, in the eye and he tells them, I will create something beautiful when I get older. Dr. Manhattan goes on to describe how he wanted to make this creation. So as the wave with the wave of his hand, he creates this euphoria-esque world or, or being or existence with the grass. And then he creates life. And then those two lives grow into adulthood. And we see that these are the two clones or images of what he remembers as a child, the same woman and the same man. And he makes it to where their existence is serving him and they love everything that they see. And Angela's just sitting there like, so you created this world and everything was so beautiful and there's no Adam and Eve. Okay. And she's just, she's listening to everything, but of course she still thinks that this is a guy at the bar trying to get all her attention. He tells her, well, you know, I'm really interested in being with you. As a matter of fact, I love you. And I know I love you because I already do. And she says, whoa, like, I know you're trying to hang out with me and pick me up and all this good stuff and get me a beer, but how can you already love me? And if you love me, okay, well, since we first met, when was that moment? Was it when you first saw me? Was it when you first looked me into the, my eyes? What is it that there was an exact moment? And he's confused by that. And he says, well, what do you mean by moment? She says, well, what was the moment that you fell in love with me? And he says, well, I'm confused. I don't know what you mean, but where I am, I can look back on certain moments, certain things that happen. And she says, well, this isn't really a celebration for me. And it's really nothing I look forward to. And he tells her to confirm that instead of celebrating this is something that hurts you. And she says, yeah, you know, I hate 
Dr. Manhattan. I hope you're not him because Dr. Manhattan answered the call with President Nixon and working with him to bomb people that are in Vietnam and then which proceeded to people being hostile and creating terrorism and, th and they created a bomb and then that explosion killed my parents. So I actually hate Dr. Manhattan, so I hope that's not you. Still in disbelief, she says, if you're Dr. Manhattan, you know, glow, make yourself blue, do something incredible since you claim to be him. And he says, well, you know, I could do that, but that would, really wouldn't be a good idea. And she says, well, another problem is if you take me out on a date, you know, what do you look like? You can't walk around with blue paint on and a mask. Why don't you show me who you are and take that off? Because if we go out and you're really Dr. Manhattan, how are we going to be able to kind of be in this setting of not knowing, letting everybody know that you're not Dr. Manhattan? And he says, well, you know, you created an idea and you'll show me what that idea is. And she's still confused of what he's saying. So we cut to the next scene in which we see Angela in a morgue or a holding area for dead bodies. And she's showing them, him all of the different bodies that have deceased. And she says, well, here are all the bodies. And if you so far want a capsule or something to hold yourself in or something to replicate that would be human-esque, here are your choices. And he tells her, well, why must I take form of these bodies? What do you want? What images do you have? And she tells him, well, you know, it really doesn't matter to me. And he says, well, what do you want? She keeps looking and she holds, she opens up one shelf and we see the body that is the exact same of what we know as to be Calvin. And she says, I like this one. And he looks at it. And he says, okay. And we see this blue hue transform is into Cal, but he still has that Manhattan symbol in the middle of his forehead. And of course, Angela can't believe what she's seeing and that he's transformed into this body because she tells him, you know, you can claim one of these bodies because this individual here, he has no family. There'll be no one to, you know, want to claim his body or anything. He's just going to be, you know, burned and they're going to throw away his ashes. So, you know, we can put these bodies to, you know, we can't put these bodies to waste. You know, they can be used. But as he makes this transformation, Angela asked about the symbol on his forehead. And is it something that he can, you know, erase? And we see that he erases that symbol on his forehead. Throughout this episode, the scenes are simultaneously going from present to in the past, to present to in the past. And we go back and forth with all of these scenes. So in the next scene, we see Dr. Manhattan and Angela, and he's telling her 10 months from now, we're going to get into an argument and then you're going to tell me to leave but we'll be together for 10 years but it'll end tragically and Angela is just really like okay so if we're gonna be together for such a long period of time why would I tell you to leave 10 months from now and he says we're gonna get in an argument and it's gonna be an argument about the past and you'll tell me to leave then we we'll, we see a push forward 10 months from where they're when they had the date of them having sex and seems like everything is fine but on Angela's mind she knows it's 10 months from that date of when they first met and she's she's just like I'm gonna tell you to leave and she she's confused because they're having wonderful sex and they're having a good time and he's just like yes we'll have an argument and she says but why do we have to have an argument why do things have to go wrong can't we just not argue and just avoid the process of me telling you to leave and he's saying no we're gonna have an argument and she's like well I don't know why and he's like the argument is beginning <laughs> which is like oh man but he brings up her upbringing her being in an orphanage uh, not having a true self uh, a sense of identity and it frustrates her and it gets her upset because she doesn't want to talk about her experience being an orphan an orphan she doesn't want to talk about her experience of her parents dying and it flares up negative energy it flares up anger to the point to where she doesn't want to talk about it and she doesn't want him 
around all gaining to the point to where she cringes and she sits down on the edge of the bed and it makes sense for her to tell him to leave and he does and he vanishes as quickly as she says it and she hates that what he told her as something that was going to happen ended up happening we see that after dr manhattan leaves he goes to where adrian is sitting and there are several screens on the wall and Adrian is just looking at humanity like, oh, you just had to do it. Why did you do it? And he's looking at just this catastrophe on the news saying, you just had to make a bomb. You just had to do this. Now look what you've done. Now look what you've created. And we see that Dr. Manhattan is behind him and he hears the footsteps of somebody walking. And he says, oh, well, how are you, John? And John says, oh, well, hello, Adrian. And he tells him, well, it's a mess. You know, he's just sitting there looking at the TV. And Dr. Manhattan says, well, how did you know it was me? And we see this, this naked body of Dr. Manhattan still in the form of Cal. And he says, well, how did you know it was me? And Adrian proceeds to tell him, you have to be Dr. Manhattan because you're the only one that has the balls <laughs> to walk around in your birthday suit and to just, you know, like it's nothing. And cheers and hats off to HBO in, in showing that beautiful black penis. But anyway, um, <laughs> and Dr. Manhattan says, well, would you prefer to me to get dressed? So the next scene we see Dr. Manhattan is dressed and speaking to Adrian, you know, not in the form in which he came, which was completely naked. Adrian, he asked Dr. Manhattan, well, how long has it been? And Manhattan says, well, to you, it's been 24 years, 41 days and 13 hours. And Adrian says, wow, all that time. Well, in the event of 21 years ago, 41 hour, 41 days and 13 hours, what was, what was the last thing that you said to me? And he goes on to describe Dr. Manhattan that with that point in time, you tried to get rid of me, you tried to destroy me. And Adrian says, well, yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> and he says, yes, at that point in time, I'm telling you how disappointed that I am. And he's, and you, that you told me that you killed 13 million people. And Adrian says, yes, that's, that's about right. And he goes into another room and we see that Adrian has this apparatus that's dropping these small squids that we saw earlier in the season that appears to be a, a rain of these squids that are dropping down to earth. And Dr. Manhattan says, I still see that you're painting this picture of alien influence on the world. You're still doing this same thing. And he says, yeah, you know, I'm trying to keep peace. And, and peace on earth and trying to keep humanity intact. Adrian is very curious as to why Dr. Manhattan is not in his true form. He's not in this glowing blue hue as normal. And he asked him, you know, well, why are you in this form? Things have changed now from the last time that we talked, but you're in this form now. And there's only one thing that makes sense that you've changed your, your God-esque being and formation into something mortal. You know, that makes sense. Who is she? And Dr. Manhattan says, you know, her name is Angela. And we've talked and he says, well, she doesn't know who you are. Like you've told her that you're this person here. And he says, well, no, she knows who I am. And Adrian can't believe it. He steps back and says, you're going through all of that. And you're, you've done this evolution as to what she's seeing. You want to be mortal, don't you? You don't like this God as formality. And he tells them, no, that he's, not happy with being this god s creature and could adrian help him to take a more permanent per se mortal form and adrian says yeah i can i can help you with that i mean if you think about it i did try to destroy you so i do have some things laying around here he shows him this device which is the device that we see in the last episode that angela took out and he says this device is made from materials that even you overlooked or you couldn't get to but this will work in such a way that 
it'll give you amnesia. It'll take you out of who you are. You can't remember your being or, or anything like that. It will give you amnesia and you can start a new life with this form that you're in. But there's only one catch. Once you have this in, once you have this device in, that's it. So I would suggest you take care of any business that you need to do before you become this amnesia person. And Dr. Manhattan says, well, you know, I need to speak with Angela's grandfather. You know, she, she's unaware of who he is, but I need to, to speak with him. It's something that we need to sort out. And he says, you know, great. When you do this, you'll be in this form and your powers won't be what they are. So that would give me a window to take care of things that I have in mind myself. And Dr. Manhattan says, well, since I'll be away and I won't remember who I really am, I've created this utopia. I've created this world. And the beings that are on there, my creations, they're just waiting on someone to arrive and someone to worship. I could, I could take you there. Would you, would you like for me to place you in that area? And with this happy, settling, just thought of the idea, Adrian says, yes. So Dr. Manhattan waves his hand, and the next thing we know, Adrian goes to this euphoria place that Dr. Manhattan told him about. The next scene, we see Dr. Manhattan in the Calvin form, speaking with Angela, telling her that in order for us to have this life, in order for us to move forward and me to forget who I am and we can start this as this new couple, I need you to place this device in my head. And Angela says, okay, after I do that and you have amnesia, I mean, what exactly are you forgetting? Will you remember who you are in any way, who I am? Uh, will you be able to walk? I mean, will you still be functional? And he's telling her, I don't know. That's why it's a gamble and that's why we're gonna try it. And Angela says, hmm, so we'll be together 10 years and we'll have children that are not biologically ours, but they'll be adopted, but it'll all end in tragedy. And she's thinking if that is a good payoff of it all. And he says, yes, that is what will happen. And she says, well, I guess you need to get down on one knee. So he gets down on one knee and without any more hesitation, she places the device on his forehead and it pretty much disappears into his mind where you can no longer see the symbol and now he has taken this form of Calvin. Then go back to a cut scene of them at the date. And she says, so you can create life, huh? He says, yeah, I can create life. And she says, well, show me something. Prove to me that you can do this. And with a wave of his hand, he shows her that he has created an egg and she asked him well if you can create life and you have these powers can your powers be transferred to someone else and he says well technically yes and she goes forward to crack the egg and place it into the beer as if she's about to drink it and she says oh I don't believe it you can have that nonsense but what's interesting about the scene is Dr. Manhattan grabs the beer and drinks it down and makes sure, make sure to swallow the egg. I bet Dr. Manhattan was like, I'm not even gonna risk that. I'm gonna go ahead and swallow it just to be safe. Then cut to the current scene that ended from the last episode with Angela holding the device in her hand. And we see this now cow formation still in that same form, still looking the same, but he, him regaining that blue hue, letting us know that it's back to Dr. Manhattan form. She says, Cal, John, cause she's trying to think, okay, what is the current state of this being? Will we taken out this device? Will his memory come back automatically? And we see that she's saying it's 2019. You're in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Cal, John, still trying to figure out where he is at the current state. And she says, there are people that are here to hurt you and I had to bring you back. I had no other choice but to bring you back. 
You know, who are you right now? And Dr. Manhattan, he has this scope of confusion because he's used to being in more than one place at one time, at different moments of time, but he can't remember where he is currently and what's going on currently. And he tells her that he can't recollect that and to give him a moment. And he disappears and Angela's just like, oh, no, like what's going on? And we hear the children saying, daddy, daddy, where are you daddy? And Angela runs upstairs just to see what's going on. And the kids are looking at him outside on the pool, walking on water. And the kids are saying, that looks like Cal. What is Cal doing out there? And she says, well, that is Cal. You know, I'll have to explain everything to you later. And as she's talking, the kids vanish. And she goes down to the pool and she says, what is going on? What did you do with the children? And he says, don't worry, they're safe. She's like, no, 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 no. You need to tell me right now where you sent the kids. And he says, well, I'll tell you, but I needed you to see me walking on this water in the pool. It's very important for the future. And she says, okay, I see you. You're walking on the water in the pool. Okay, where did you place the kids? And he tells her that your children are with your grandfather and they're with your grandfather 10 years ago in a certain time and downtown, uh, what was it, downtown Tulsa. And she says, you spoke to my grandfather, what, what are you doing? She's just so confused, she has no idea what he's talking about. But we see the cutback where he's telling her this at the same time frame where Vite is giving me the device. And he's telling me, before I put this device in your head, you may want to take care of unfinished business. And he's telling him that I have to finish up some business with Angela's grandfather, who she doesn't know exists yet. I, I, I need to speak with him. So we see that cut of those moments of time. He goes to Will's house, which we hear the narrative of him telling Angela. He has been living at the residence where uh, Metropolis, after he died, he left that estate to Will. So that's where he is. We then see Dr. Manhattan asked to speak with the Will. And he's just like, no, you know, you can't speak to me. And Dr. Manhattan didn't take that as an answer. So he goes through the door <laughs> into the living area, into a reading room. And he says, well, we need to talk. And at that point, Will notices that there's nothing he can do. Clearly, this man has some type of powers to just walk through walls and to come into the house. And he proceeds to tell him that I know who you are. I know that you're um, the, the vigilante. Uh, we need to discuss a few things. You have a granddaughter. You don't know that she exists, but your son has a daughter. And I need to build an alliance. I need your help. There are some things that we need to do. And he proceeds to go on and tell him more details and why it's important that they speak. As Dr. Manhattan is in this moment in time, Angela is asking him, can you ask my grandfather why he killed Judd? Can you ask him how he found out that he had the Klan uniform in his closet. Can you can you ask him that right now? And Dr. Manhattan tells ask him, why did you kill Judd? Why did you why did you kill him? And how did you know all of these details? And Will says, Who? And he doesn't know who that is. And Dr. Manhattan looks at Angela and, and he says, He doesn't know who Judd is, but now he does. And Angela has this epiphany like, oh no. Is it because I've asked the question that now he knows? Am I the reason why Judd is killed? Because he was looking for him and trying to find out what that name is. She's, she feels as if she started this domino effect in the first place. But Dr. Manhattan says, huh, what do you know? It's the paradigm. She says, what? He's like the chicken or the egg, which one came first? And she says, well, I don't get what you mean. He says, does it matter how Judd, would, Judd was killed or if Will did it and how he found out? Isn't it important that Judd is gone? So it really doesn't matter how he got killed. The point is that he's not here. So why does it matter how Will found out and how things shifted in order to get that done? Why does that matter? 
And Angela says, it does matter because I'm probably the reason why he went after him in the first place. And Dr. Manhattan gives her that eye like, you're really not listening to what I'm saying, are you? <laughs> Throughout this whole monologue as they're talking, Dr. Manhattan does a turn and says, I'm hungry, and then disappears. And Angela's like, mm, she's just cursing, like, can he not disappear? I'm trying to talk to him. So she goes to the kitchen and we see Dr. Manhattan has all these ingredients in the air and he's making something. And Angela says, what are you doing? What are you making? He says, I'm making waffles. Oh, watch out for those eggs. And Angela just throws the eggs down in frustration. And she's like, I, I, I'm trying to tell you that we're in danger here. You know, there's only so many people that know certain details and will. He's with Lady True, so clearly they know something's going on. And there's just danger. We need to, you know, we need to figure out why we're still here. We need to get out of here. And he says, well, 7th Cavalry is all already here. They're in a truck across the street or the, and they're outside. And Angela looks outside in the blinds and sees that 7th Cavalry is outside. And she says, all of this time, you knew that they were outside and you didn't say anything. You've, we've been talking about all this other stuff. And he says that that had more weight and more importance than 7th Cavalry. And he tries to let her know that you're gonna try to save me or do something, but it's nothing that you can do. 7th Cavalry right now, they have a teleport machine outside which is gonna take me away. And Angela is not having that. She says, no, if not, if I have something to do with it. And she's starting to put her jacket on. She puts in the coals to get into the safe, to get a gun out. And as she's trying to save him, Dr. Manhattan gives her this look of, wow, she's really trying to save me. And he has this endearing look like, she really does care. She really does love me. And he says, you know, when you asked me years ago about that moment like how did i know i was in love with you and how did i know that i loved you it's this moment and she says you waited 10 years to tell me that like you couldn't tell me that earlier and he says it's this moment that i love you and that i know it and she says well whatever you know she's trying to get outside to take care of some business and she proceeds to go outside and do her thing and she was just like well you stay in here and i'm gonna try to save you she goes outside and we already see that she's outnumbered. She's shooting. There's this, this quick action sequence that's going on. She's trying her best to shoot at everyone. She's getting a few shots here and there and taking them down. And as she's doing it, you think of, wow, she is outnumbered. There are trucks all over the place. She's out of ammo. She's starting to get just just overwhelmed by wow am i ab ab about to be murdered am i going to catch a bullet and then as she proceeds to fight with something or to go out and try to fi fight with something we see dr manhattan he proceeds to go out there and he blows up literally heads and he's defending her and fighting them off and killing them off one by one and as it's happening, you're thinking, oh, maybe these, this sequence of, of time is changing and maybe there will be some victory about what is happening. He kills everyone. And Angela has this look of, wow, you did it. And she turns to him and say, says, we won. Look, we won. What you thought was going to happen, it didn't happen. And he looks at Angela and he says, I'm sorry. I was right. Then we see the teleportation device proceed to aim at him and take him away. And that is the end of the episode before the credits roll. After the credits roll and as they're going off, we hear over and over again, will you stay master? No. Will you stay master? No. And as a viewer, you're like, what the heck is going on? What is that? After the credits roll up, we see more footage and we see Adrian. He's attached to this device and he's being, you know, he's, he's being tied down. And we see all of the clones one by one grabbing a tomato and smushing it in his face after he says, no, will you stay master? No. And they take another tomato and they smash it in his face. So that is his, I guess you've been punished and we're letting you know that 
We're asking you, will you stay? And you don't want to stay in this paradise. So they're letting him know with the smashed tomatoes that we don't want you to leave. So as after that happens, we see Adrian. He's in this cell, this jail cell. You can tell he's been in there for a while. He's dusty. He's dirty. His hair is a mess. It's not this posh individual that we've been seeing throughout the series. And we have the masked gentleman who's one of the clones that comes in. And he's brought him a cake with candles in it. And he says, you know, what are you bringing me this for? Are you, are you going to sing for he's a jolly good fellow? Why, why are you bringing me this? And he says, well, they wanted to make you a cake. This is something that they thought would bring you some joy. And by the way, what are you reading? He tells him that it's about being alone or being <laughs> abandoned along those lines. And the mask clone tells him, you know, I... I, I, I get how you're feeling. And he's telling him, I'm just feeling like this, 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 this blue person went out to get, went to get a bag of cigarettes and never came back. You know, I, I'm just feeling some type of way, basically. And he tells Adrian that I was here when he created it all, the, the new skies, the grass, just everything, letting him know that I was here from the beginning. So there's some hurt with him being the original, with him being there from the beginning of when Dr. Manhattan waved his hand. And he tells him, you know what, just enjoy your cake. And he leaves the cell and the door closes. And Adrian notices that this cake is just a little bit different. And he can't figure out why. And he smashes the cake. And when he smashes the cake, he sees a horseshoe, which brings him this just this happiness in thinking that I'm in this cell, but they've given me something that might allow me to dig my way out or find a way to get out of this cell. And that is the end of the entire episode an amazing ride to learn that Cal, of course, we, I mean, that was introduced to us in the last episode, but the, the fact that Cal is Dr. Manhattan, like, wow, that journey of how they met and how Angela has known this whole time who he is. It's not a surprise. She's aware and she's taking, taking that decision to say, I know what this is. I know that he's he lost his memory. I know she's aware of the whole thing. So the fact that in the episode, Dr. Manhattan, when he's talking to Adrian, he tells him, you know, Angela, she's this wonderful person. She talks about how um, she doesn't want children or she doesn't want children or, 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 or happiness or marriage, but it's quite the opposite by her actions. She doesn't even know that she's showing the actions that show otherwise. Um, he mentions that when he was in her presence, he could feel the emptiness that she had in knowing family, who her grandfather was, just all of these things, her parents not being there, that he felt and he saw that emptiness in her. So this whole experience that Angela has had with Dr. Manhattan is that her finally having a piece of some sort of family, some sort of happiness. And when she asked 10 years and then ending in tragedy, she's saying, wow, it's worth it to her. It was worth it to her to have 10 years and then end in a tragedy because it was better to have that, it's better to have loved than, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's just, it's just that correlation with that. Learning more about Adrian and how he's involved. I just can't see how they're going to wrap this up with one more episode, unless the last episode is two hours, because this episode felt like it was 30 minutes. I really honestly think that it there might be a season two because there's still so much detail that we need to know or that we could learn now they could end it with episode nine leaving us with unanswered questions and they just said hey we'll answer as much as we can and it's just going to be one season but it's still a lot to to kind of swallow um in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, Agent Blake find about find out about where her boo been this whole time. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you were not on Mars, that you were here all along and you was with some other girl? <laughs> Woo, will Agent Blake find out? How will she feel about that? 
Well, then she would well, then she be the uh, vigilante and be sister kill sister night. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing to me the thought of how all of learning about all of these characters are created uh, and what they're doing and this new visual of a comic book that ended in 30 years after that. I think it's there's so much in this just these few episodes it's, it's hard to sum up in a, re a recap and in a review um one of those things is racism um, can America function without it? I mean, that's a totally different review. It's all America knows. And will, can, can white America function without it? White supremacy, it's just, there's so much to talk about. You could, you could literally have a series of videos dissecting all of the parts plausible and possible topics of discussion. There's just so much to talk about. Um, who to have sympathy for, who to not have sympathy for. Um, people were fine seeing the black people being murdered, but when it came to Judd, it, it hit another thing in the heart for a lot of white people, which is true. Seeing him, seeing him being hanged, there's so much to dissect with this. But back to the series, um, do you think that they're going to sneak a season two on us? I think so, unless the last episode is two hours and they dissect it to death and just make our heads explode with how it ends. I think that uh, Lady True with her time, millennial clock, right? Clearly that is the big banger in the last episode. Clearly that will be something to where we're all sitting on the couch like, <laughs> There's got to be some simultaneous events going on all at the same time that all work together. That is the only thing that makes sense. Will Agent Blake uh, fall into the trap of, of what Seven Calvary has planned with the lighting technology of taking control of her mind? Um is Lady True on the good side or the bad side? Because we can guess, but we don't know. Um, where is Will? Where is he actually located? Because he's not with Lady True, supposedly. There's so many questions and there's so much debate going on and how they have us on the edge of our seats. And I absolutely love it. Lady True with her statue of Adrian, there's got to be some symbolism. There's got to be something going on with her technology in, in keeping Adrian where he is. Um, is it prison-esque? There's, so there's too many questions to answer unless it's two hours or two and a half hours with the last episode. I just, I think they're going to get us and they're going to slide in that it's going to come back next summer or next fall. Is that too long of a wait to keep us uh, waiting for it? Or will people say, I'm not waiting that long for season two? No, no, you, I'm going to forget about it, forget about it by then. You know, it's a lot of what ifs in that. Oh my goodness. I was absolutely, my eyes were just, I was just, just trying to stay focused so hard on the episode. Like I, it's too many details. I tried to write down notes as much as I could, but I just, if I missed a few details here and there, I have a brain like yours. Sorry, I'm not a robot. I don't remember everything. I know you think that I can, but I'm human like you, you. <laughs> so just pardon any hiccups. Um, maybe if I pronounce something wrong, I've just had fun with this series and I actually really, really enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Subscribe. I don't know if you noticed, but I subscribe to whomever subscribes to me and follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E, who I'll, whoever follows me on there, I follow them back as well. And leave your comments. If you like this video, if you didn't like this video, let me know how I can prove. What are you liking about the channel so far? And 
Come back next week as I review the last episode, so we think, of this series, or will they keep us coming back for more? I don't know. Hey, it is HBO, okay? So we don't know. Um, let me know what you think, and also let me know where you think Will is. Let me know if you think Lady True has something up her sleeve. Is she straddling the fence of whose side? that she's on i don't know it's something about lady true that is pretty mysterious she seems like she wants to help angela but was she using angela for her own benefit mm, i really don't know i'm really not feeling so comfortable with lady true what is going on well with that does agent blake still have a little bit left of kick butt in her she's this agent but Will she put on a vigilante costume and start to help as well? Um, it is possible that Agent Blake, since she has an idea about this technology, will she be able to defer from it? Will she uh, look some other way or close her eye? Like, will she find a way to not be mesmerized by the light? Oh, it's just so many what ifs. <laughs> but come back and see me, but in the meantime, Please make sure to check out other shows that are on the channel, series that maybe you wouldn't think that you would like, but check out the introduction videos. Check out Wu-Tang Clan and American Saga. That is a Hulu original series. Look at the introduction video to that. Check out the recaps and reviews of the entire season of Jim Henson's um, Age of Resistance, The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. Check out that series. Learn different things. Open your minds to different series. Greenleaf from the OWN Network. There's so much to just to, to view on this channel. Try something different. Look at something different. Listen to it while you're at work. Put your headphones in. You know, just, just, just grow with each other and all of that good stuff. I have a lot of new things for 2020 that I can't wait to share there'll be reaction videos there'll be more discussions a lot more things i cannot wait to make the announcement of what i have for 2020 it's almost been four months it feels like i just started three weeks ago please keep in mind that i'm a new to new youtuber and i am still developing and growing let me know what you think i'll see you next time bye